Over the next 12 months, staking will open up a new opportunity for investors and funds to collect double-digit annual returns on a position pegged to the US dollar. A basis or cash and carry trade works by buying an asset and then short selling the same futures contract. In traditional finance, this is to collect a funding premium on the short, as long as pay short a premium in most markets. The same trade with state digital assets such as Ethereum, Solana and Luna will provide revenues on both sides of the trade, and it's going to be really big business. My name is James Buccini, and on this channel I create content about digital assets and blockchain development. I'm not a financial advisor, this is not financial advice. Okay, so first let's talk about what a basis trade is and how it works. So a basis trade is when you're buying something and then you're shorting the same amount of the futures contract which has that something as the underlying asset. So for example, we could buy one Bitcoin and then we could short sell the perpetual futures contract on something like Binance or FTX for one Bitcoin as well. So we're long one Bitcoin on spot markets and we can actually use that Bitcoin as collateral on the futures market. So that Bitcoin could be used to take a short position on Bitcoin for one Bitcoin as well. So the price of Bitcoin goes up or down, it doesn't really matter, the, the, your positions stay in the same relative to the US dollar because you're making money on one side and you're losing money on the other. The benefit of this is that in most markets, the longs pay the shorts a funding premium. So there's more people that want to get long on a bullish market like cryptocurrency is generally, and there'll be a positive funding rate, which means that all the people that have a long position will pay a certain percentage of their position each hour or once every eight hours for Binance, I believe it is. And that funding payment will be paid to the people that have the short position, which then balances out the contract. As the markets get really bullish, then more and more people want to get long. And that, that means that there's more people that are long in the contract than there are shorts, which increases the funding premium, further incentivizing people to take a short position. Now, if someone doesn't want to take a short position on a market which is potentially going up exponentially, then what they're likely to do is do this basis trade where they're buying the spot asset and then short selling the futures contract just to clear up that funding premium. And this is a delta neutral strategy which is used throughout traditional finance and crypto markets by lots of large funds and investors. Well, it starts to get really interesting with staking products because it allows you to earn on both sides of the trade. Your spot holdings will earn staking revenues and your short position will collect the funding premium from the futures contract. That double earning potential means that we might see APRs of something like around 20% on staked ETH post-merge. So the Ethereum merge is happening in June and what's that expected to do is increase the staking rewards as Ethereum migrates from a proof of work algorithm to a proof of stake algorithm. Not only that, but it's gonna be a large sustainable opportunity. Because Ethereum is such a big project and it's the second largest digital asset, there's a lot of potential here for people to come in and allocate large amounts of capital in this way. And 20% is a massive return on investment which is pegged to the US dollar. I know there's products like uh, Anchor for the US Terror and Lunar Ecosystem that works slightly differently and large funds might see that as quite a risky trade for them to allocate large amounts of capital to because they can get trapped in a position. And if the UST starts to de-peg, they might not be able to recoup their losses. And a lot of the traditional finance firms will be familiar with the basis trade because it's something they use in traditional markets. But there's no returns like this in traditional markets. It's not common to get a 20% return on a position which is hedged to the US dollar. That's a massive opportunity for these funds and big capital allocators. A lot of the capital that's currently locked into staking is via liquid staking tokens. You might have heard of LIDO or STETH. And that is a state Ethereum. That's a token which represents a staked position on Ethereum. So you can exchange your ETH or STE, or you can go to Curve and swap one for the other. So Lido will go ahead and stake those funds for you and you will receive the staking rewards in return. Already we've seen some staked tokens being accepted as collateral on futures exchanges. I think we're gonna see more and more of that in the future. FTX currently has ST Sol. Obviously Alameda and FTX are very involved and they have a vested interest in the Solana ecosystem. And you can actually use ST Sol as collateral for a futures contract position. So you can already do this with Solana on FTX and that's what we're gonna look at next. Okay, so this is the ST Sol US dollar market on FTX. You can see we've already purchased a small position in this. We've got about $100 of capital in this sub account and we've purchased 0.6 Solana. We have 28 US dollars left in the balance. 
I first tested this about three days ago. If we go to the Sol Perp, we can see we've also got a matching 0.6 Sol short position. This short position is actually up uh, $10 because the uh, Solana has dropped in value. That doesn't mean that I've made $10 because I've lost $10 on the spot account. So my position is still roughly around $100 because there was some cost, about 50 basis points in trading fees. Um, one of the problems I had when running this, and I'll show you how I did it, I used a variation on the audio execution strategy scripts, which I've done a previous video and blog post about, and that code's open source. The one modification I made to that was that because ST Sol USD market doesn't trade very much, you can see there's there's not much really going through here. There's I think Alameda is working as the market main market maker, but there's no one really buying and selling assets on the spot side currently. So what I did was I modified the script so that the it tries to execute on the spot side first. And then once we've got a position on the spot side, it then executes on the short side. So once we've purchased some ST Sol on the spot markets, it'll then go into the futures market, which is much more liquid on the Solana Perpetual Futures and execute there within a few seconds. There's about 50 basis points um, to get in and out of a trade from what I found on a very small test. And all this script is really doing is batching the orders into smaller pieces and then executing them one after the other. So it will buy a little bit of ST Sol, then it will execute a short for a little bit of Sol Perp, and then it will repeat the process. And what this does is it builds your position gradually and it uses the market liquidity that's available to get in and out of a, a position more efficiently. Now you can see we've just executed one Sol Perp short after it's already executed the ST Sol long. So there was only eight seconds there before the short position had matched the long position. And because we're doing it in batches, we're not kind of completely exposing ourselves to the market movement anyway. If we scroll down now, we can see we've got a 0.7 stake in ST Sol. And on the perpetual side, we've got a 0.7 position on the Sol Solana Perpetual Futures contract as well. And that's going to be making us money on both the ST Sol side because of the staking revenues, and it's going to be making us money on the Sol Perp because of the funding rate premium, assuming the funding rates are positive to current now. In June this year, we're expecting Ethereum to complete the merge and migrate from a proof of work to a proof of stake algorithm. During this time, we're going to see staking rewards increase. So some people say that it's going to be an excess of 10%. That combined of all the narrative and attention that Ethereum is going to be getting, I expect to see the funding rate premiums go up as well. Currently around 10 or 11% APR on Binance, which brings the combined total to over 20% a year APR potential on this. Obviously that can change as more money piles in, it's going to get diluted. But, and I think that's going to happen. I think there's, there's so much opportunity here and it's a relatively low risk strategy that is going to appeal to a lot of large funds and big capital allocators and that will eventually dilute the rewards. What that also means is liquid staking tokens like Lodo are going to see massive amounts of TVL. I, I think that Lido could become the first kind of DeFi project to go into excess of $100 billion. It's already at $20 billion, so it's not a massive prediction to say we might see a 5x in the amount of capital allocation to these liquid staking tokens, especially as some of the big exchanges start to open them up as collateral for their futures contracts so that people can do these basis trades. While Delta Neutral strategies appeal to a lot of large funds and traditional finance companies, it's probably not going to be something that kind of crypto natives are looking for. And I think there's also going to be a lot of attention drawn to these base assets as well for people that want exposure to them base assets, but they don't want to be hedged to the US dollar. So they're just going to be buying these assets and staking them either directly or via um, liquid staking tokens such as STE or ST Sol or ST Luna and then just holding that and receiving the staking rewards. I think it's gonna be quite hard to outperform that over a long period of time. Like STETH is doing really well and it's hard to outperform Ethereum in a bull market with a kind of a, a risk adverse portfolio. So I think it's gonna be something that can appeal to someone in a kind of a set and forget way. You can just literally buy this token, stake it, increase your portfolio in F terms via the yield coming in from staking and that will grow over time. I also hold the LDO token I have done since I first covered it in September 2021 and 
that's a governance token from Lido Finance, which provide, produce these liquid staking tokens. I think the narrative of the summer of staking this year and also the flow of capital into these stake tokens is going to be really massive. So I'm happy to hold that and continue holding it for the foreseeable future. Lido isn't the only company that makes liquid staking tokens. Their next biggest competitor is a company called Rocket Pool and their R ETH token. They're currently making some moves on Curve and I think we're going to see more and more kind of companies and projects coming into this space and putting out their own products. I think that's good for decentralization, having a competitive market. We don't want to see a monopoly around just a single company doing staking on the Ethereum network. I hope you found this video interesting and informative. Please hit the like button for the YouTube algorithm and consider subscribing if you're interested in learning more about decentralized finance. Thank you for watching.